Okay. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to go ahead and replace the carburetor on a weed eater. Now we've had a couple of videos recently where we, we rebuild them and go through them head to toe, but replacing it for the guy at home is usually an easier way to go. And let me show you why. You see, when you're rebuilding a carburetor, you start out with this little kit, which has all the gaskets and whatnot that you need in it. However, for 15 bucks, if you don't do this all the time, for $15, you can get new fuel lines. You can get the tool to do the fuel lines. You can get the tool to adjust the carburetor, the carburetor, filter, and spark plug for $15. So for home users, this is definitely the economical way to go. If you're buying these 10 at a time and you're buying these 10 at a time, and you're buying fuel lines by the roll, then it's definitely smarter to rebuild them. But for the home users, just buy the kit, be done with it. So now that we're doing the kit, let's have a look at this. Let's pull this carburetor off and put a new one on. Okay, now we've got the carburetor off. Now we're going to crack the gas cap before we remove the fuel lines. Ah, but it looks like this one wants new fuel lines. That's not a problem. So let's throw some new fuel lines on. And this is, and now I'm going to let that line go. We're just going to put a new fuel line on. And this is where this new, new tool comes in handy. And if you didn't have that tool, see, I've got mine that's already ready to go. If you didn't have this tool, it would have been difficult to fix this one. So we're going to go ahead and taper the end on this one and run, run our new fuel line tool up through here. Sometimes they go real easy. Sometimes they fight you all the way. Depends on the angle of your gas tank. So let's do this and get this thing coming up. This particular one is a more arbitrary angle than a lot of them are. But as you can see, it fed back up through pretty easy. On this one, let's put a little bit of a stiffer, stiffer angle on it. There you go. You can see we've got a nice long, thin taper now. Now we'll hook the very end of our taper to our fuel line tool. Pull it back through, and you're almost done right there. There it is. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. That one's being tough on me. Let's roll this over just a little bit so I can get a really good grip on it. And there she goes. Now we'll put that tool off to the side. And when we get here, we'll take the new filter we got in the kit and squeeze it all the way on. And you see we've got it all the way on as far as it'll go. We'll shove that in the tank and make sure that she sits at the bottom. We'll pull up some more of our slack. I might see a piece of old fuel line laying down there. Probably has a filter on the end. Let's get that out of there. No, just a piece of old fuel line, nothing else. Now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the little primer bulb to make sure it goes where I want it to go. You want the primer bulb to lay right here in the middle of the tank. Sometimes they go there easy peasy. Well, 90% of the time they go there easy peasy. But not this time. There we go. Now she's laying on the bottom of the tank, nice and neat. So we'll note where our old carburetor goes. And we're, we'll cut our fuel line to match. I always leave just a little bit extra, because remember, you can't cut more onto it. Now this is just this easy. So the line's on, and we're pretty much done with this one. The old gasket looks okay. So let's grab our air box. 
and throw her back together. Remember to put your uh, linkage on before you before you get this far. I'm going to need a little bit more slack on that fuel line. Okay, it looks good, looks good, looks good. So let's gently tighten her in a little bit. And that's it. We put some gas in it and she's done. Our kit came with a new filter, so we're going to go ahead and use it. New air filter. So this weed eater now has new fuel lines, new filters, and new carburetor. And that was just all there was to it. Let's put some fuel in her and test her. Okay, that should just about do it for that one. Now, since this one doesn't have an end on it, I can test it on the bench pretty easy. Usually, I have to put them on the floor to test them. This bench is definitely not an ideal height. You'd want it to be a little lower for pulling the cord. But I like to have my bench a little bit taller for when I'm working on things. Let's prime her up. Give her a full choke. I'm still seeing some air bubbles in here. I don't know if I like that. And we might and might not have to adjust this. But let's try her anyway. She's full choke. She's primed up. Ah, now you heard that little bit. So we're going to hit the gas. It's normal when you get a new one, you need a little bit of an adjustment. Now we're doing the low screw first, which is the one closest to the engine. Okay, we'll go right about there. The idle sounds pretty good. Now I hear a little bit of stutter when she's taken off, so the first thing we're going to try is a little bit more gas by turning it out. Yep. Now she's still revving a little bit slow. I think we might need a little bit more gas on the low side for this one. Sounds a whole lot better there. Okay, very nice. So the big question is, will she start without choke now? And that's ready to go. Now I'm going to include a link up here for rebuilding the carburetor from top to bottom and replacing the fuel lines. But if your weed eater at home just doesn't want to start or you've had it for a few years and it just doesn't work the way it could, replacing the carburetor is just that easy. And when you buy the kit, it gives you all the little parts and it'll give you a little tool to pull the fuel lines through and everything. So for all you new people out there, go ahead and subscribe and talk to you next time.